Hello guys, welcome back. Now in this session, we are going to perform learning assignment 12 where we will beautify SPFX custom form using bootstrap. So let's understand what we are going to do. So guys, in this session, we are going to beautify our custom SPFX form using bootstrap. So currently, our form looks something like this, which is very dull and ugly. We want to make our form something like this where we can beautify our form something like this so to make our form which looks something like this we have to follow certain steps so what are those steps let's look into that so guys to work with bootstrap in spfx we have to take these four steps to use the bootstrap in spfx framework so we will start with step one where we will install types jquery module which will provide intelligence capability for our jquery once it is being done then we will proceed to the step 2 where we can make entry of bootstrap and jquery external libraries in config.json file it is very important once it is being done at a step 3 we will import the sp component loader inside the webpart.ts file once all these prerequisite is being done to use the bootstrap we will proceed to the step 4 and we will use all the classes which is exist inside the bootstrap to make our form beautiful so let's jump into the visual studio code to perform all these steps so guys i am inside the visual studio code and over here i will open a terminal and perform the first step that is to install the types jquery so let's do it npm install at types slash jquery at the rate 3 enter once it is being done it will install the type jquery library over here the installation is being completed now we will proceed to the step 2 where we need to update the config.json file and over here we need to update the external key over here we need to specify the jquery as well as bootstrap information so that we can use the external libraries inside our solution so this is very very important so what we need to do he over here we need to specify the entry the entry is going to be like i am going to tell jquery over here we will specify the path for a time being just leave it blank then we will proceed for the and then we will specify global name i'm going to tell it as jquery because these are required whenever we do the import statement inside the web part file so once it is being done i will proceed for the next entry for bootstrap so over here i will tell bootstrap inside that here i will specify the path next entry i will make it over here global name in the global name i am going to specify as the bootstrap once this is being done i will tell that is there any dependency for this particular external library yes i have jquery dependency so i will tell global dependency and over here i will make an entry jquery now what path over here we will give so that i will show you now so guys for the jquery we are going to use the cdn which is provided over here that is ajax.googleapis.com and we will copy this you should note it down i have also given in the resource section you can copy those once it is being done go back to the visual studio code and paste it over here now for the bootstrap let's go back again for the bootstrap we are having another cdn that we will copy this and we specify in the path key so this is the value for the path key now save this one we are done with the step 2 now we will proceed for the and import the bootstrap library inside our web part file that is our step 3 so let's do it so we will go inside the event registration web part.ts file close this one and over here we go to the top and over here we will make an entry so over here first we will write import sp component loader and this class comes from microsoft slash sp loader we did now spelling mistake over here it should be sp loader now this is being done now next we need to import jquery import a strict this dollar from jquery we need to specify the jquery over here once this is being done we have to import the bootstrap so how we will do that we will tell that require bootstrap and then we need to define a variable over here and then we can specify the bootstrap url so let's do that let css url equal to here we need to specify this path that is referring to the bootstrap css now let's proceed further now we need to write something like sp component loader dot load css this will help us to load the css and over here we need to specify the variable name which we have created css url once it is being done then we will proceed for the and this time we will load the ajax so how we will do that again we are going to use sp component loader dot 
over here we need to specify the load script that is going to load the ajax script and then over here we need to specify the ajax url ajax url is this one i will copy from here i will copy this one and go back to the visual studio code and over here i will specify that so now we have done with the step 3 almost we have done now i will start using the bootstrap css classes so let's do it i will start it from the div so i will come over here and i have a div over here so over here we have to specify something called id equal to container and then we need to specify class equal to container as well then we need to specify for the second div we need to specify something called class equal to panel so these are the classes of css from the bootstrap so we need to specify panel over here now i am using the table so we have the class for table as well so we need to specify over here we will tell class equal to table all these are coming from the bootstrap once it is being done then we will proceed for the and we will search for controls so over here we are having input control so for controls we are going to use a class called form control so over here we will mention that form control over here so that it will apply form control css to this particular control make sure that you are copying this one because i am going to use the same line of code for other controls as well we are having another control over here that is username so i will paste the same over here then we are having emails for this also we will paste the form control then we are having drop down list that is also going to use the same bootstrap class and for level of knowledge also we will use the same now we have done with the text boxes now what is remaining is the buttons so for the buttons we are going to write something like this so let's go up we are having a button over here it is read registered user info and over here i will mention class equal to i'm going to tell that btn space btn hyphen primary i want to use the primary button class and over here we need to tell that buttons once it is being done copy this line of code and paste it for all the four button which we are having so now we will come down and over here we are having all these buttons specify the same values and over here also we can specify the same over here also we will specify the same do the same for delete also we have one more table and that table is over here if you remember while while doing the read operation we have created a table so for this also we need to specify over here we will come over here we will tell that class equal to table so this will also use the bootstrap table class css table class so guys now we are done with the steps so let's save it and build it and let's see how it look like now to run this we need to go to the terminal new terminal and over here we will tell girl build into start the building process so guys it has started the build process now it has completed the build process now let's proceed further and type girl serve minus minus no browser into this will start the server now it is starting the server now server is started let's go to the hosted workbench so guys i am inside the hosted workbench and over here i will add the web part so let's add it event registration web part click on it and you will see that we have beautify our full looking form into this beautiful form let's verify other table as well over here you can click read and over here you will find that table is also looking very beautiful with the help of bootstrap and this is what i wanted to demonstrate you in this session so let's proceed and wrap our session guys in this session we have learned a very major thing that how to use the external libraries inside the spfx framework that is one of the important learning we did so how we have used the bootstrap with the help of these four steps first we have installed types jquery then at the second step we have made an entry of bootstrap and jquery at external libraries in config.json file then at a step 3 we have imported sp component loader to the web part.ts file and at last we have used bootstrap classes inside our custom form so on this note i am stopping over here see you in the next session till then bye bye take care